Computers that are taking over the job of people, realistic photo and video that does not require a single camera, and chatbots that are able to answer any question. Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Pascal and I'm an IT consultant based in the Netherlands. Today we're going to talk about AI. This is part one of a two-part series in which we're going to talk about what artificial intelligence really is and check out what the hype ChatGPT and Midjourney is all about. Whether you're completely new to the subject or already have some knowledge about AI, this video is for you. If you have a friend or a family member that definitely needs to know about artificial intelligence, make sure to send them this video. So without further ado, let's get right into it. When people think about artificial intelligence, they think about robots and futuristic systems that take over the world. So what is artificial intelligence or AI for short? That depends on who you ask it. There are four definitions of artificial intelligence, but the one that we're going for today is that AI is a type of technology that enables machines and computers to perform tasks that normally require human intelligence to complete. This can include tasks like recognizing images, understanding spoken language, making decisions, and even creating new content like music or art. AI works by using algorithms and sets of rules to analyze data and identify relationships and patterns. It can learn from experience and improve its performance over time, just like we do. And then there are even some types of AI that use neural networks, which have been modeled after the structure of the human brain to process and analyze complex data. We basically recognize two types of AI. Weak AI or a narrow specialized AI, which is a form of AI that works in a limited context. It is only created to perform a single or a series of predefined tasks really well. These kinds of AI really seem intelligent because they're really good at what they're programmed to do. Under this category, you can basically list all kinds of AI out there. So take this for example, an AI that is made for transcribing human language. This is really good in recognizing the individual words and putting them on paper. But don't want this kind of AI to drive your car for you. The same goes for artificial intelligence that is in electric vehicles. It might be really good at driving the car for you, but you don't want it to analyze text and point out your mistakes. So this kind of AI actually has a lot of constraints and limitations. Far more than the most basic form of human intelligence. So the other type of artificial intelligence is strong AI or general artificial intelligence. It's a system that can perform many different tasks really well, even though it has been never trained on it. Which basically means that the AI has not been created for that specific purpose in mind, but still is able to perform the task. So you can look at this as how a person would address a new situation and solve problems that arise, even though it has never seen those situations or problems before. And this is exactly the crazy kind of AI that we see in movies that are portrayed as these evil systems that are trying to take over the world eventually. This is also the kind of AI that researchers have been trying to accomplish. AI with human level intelligence or even something that surpasses that. And as a result, this kind of research is often combated with many hiccups along the way. And that is because many people believe that this kind of research should be limited due to the potential risks and insufficient guardrails that are currently in place. Don't worry, even though some of the artificial intelligence examples that are shown in this video series might seem to have reached this level of intelligence, I can assure you that they haven't. Alright, so don't worry if you didn't know the information up till this point. Five years ago, Packet conducted a survey in which they have asked people whether or not they were using artificial intelligence application. 84% of the respondents of the survey were actually using artificial intelligence on a daily basis. But only 34% knew that they were using artificial intelligence. That basically means that a lot of people that are using applications in their daily life don't know that they already include some form of artificial intelligence. Let me illustrate that with some example. Because I'm sure that you also have been using artificial intelligence over the past five years. So for example, I'm going through my Gmail and I see that they are already recognized into different kind of folders. That's AI. Do I know this person on Facebook? How does it know that? Yes, that's also AI. Fancy new filter in Snapchat. Also AI. So what about YouTube recommendations? Yes, also AI. But let's help it out a little bit by subscribing to the channel and giving a thumbs up. Because then only the YouTube recommendations know that they need to give you more of this kind of content. And if you press the bell icon, you also will be updated for part two of this video. So artificial intelligence might have been more intertwined in our life than you might have thought. 
if artificial intelligence has already been in our life for a while, then what is this recent hype all about? Recent hype is also caused by applications such as JTPT and Maturity, their availability to the public. The artificial intelligence was something that only computer scientists had access to. Now the general public can access it as well. So let's start with ChatGPT. ChatGPT is a chatbot application which was released in November 2022 by the company called OpenAI. In just five days, it already had more than a million users. Who, as the user, can communicate with ChatGPT by using messages which are called prompts. Prompts are like instructions to ChatGPT. For example, if you want ChatGPT to explain something to you as if you were a beginner to the subject, you would include this in the prompt that you would send to ChatGPT. And what ChatGPT will do is it will try and find the information for you and provide it back to you in an easy to understand way. ChatGPT can also carry out instructions to write code, like how a developer would when creating a website or an application. If you want something like this, then basically in your prompt, you mention that you wanted to write code for you in a specific language and for which specific use case you want ChatGPT to write the code for. And then just hit enter and it will come up with a response. Don't worry if this might seem like a little bit of hocus pocus. I will create a detailed guide on how to use ChatGPT very soon. And once it's available, I'll link it in the video description or you can find it somewhere pop up in this video. So that brings us to the question, how can ChatGPT answer all these questions? ChatGPT is a large language model or LLM, which is trained on all sorts of data. For example, travel blogs, Wikipedia articles, scientific papers, and much more. During its training process, it learned how to generate text which is both relevant and coherent. As a result, it can now also answer questions based on topics that it hasn't been trained on before. It will simply predict what the answer will be based on the big data set that it currently has. This is very different than traditional chatbots that you might have seen in large e-commerce websites like Amazon. These kind of chatbots basically look for a specific keyword in your question, go through a list of answers that they have been programmed with and give that back to you. ChatGPT is also very different than Google because Google basically gives you a bunch of websites where you can find the information yourself. ChatGPT tries to come up with the information and gives the answer back to you right in the chat. Convenient, right? ChatGPT is open for everyone to try right now, so you can also go and try it yourself. Go to chat.openai.com, create an account, you can already start to type your question. Like I mentioned before, ChatGPT will try to answer your question as best as possible based on the data it has been trained on. Downside, however, is that ChatGPT has been trained up until September 2021. If you ask questions about a historical event that happened after this date, it might not have a good answer for you. You should be careful here because ChatGPT will probably try to give you an answer anyway, which might not be historically correct. The GPT in ChatGPT doesn't mean Gerald Peter Tollis, but in fact refers to the architecture the system has been built on, which stands for Generative pre-trained transformer, which is actually a really interesting topic, but I'll save that one for a future video. Important to know is that GPT is a groundbreaking architecture in comparison with previous AI architectures. GPT is smarter, more accessible, and more applicable to different kinds of tasks. That brings us to the numbers that are involved. You might have seen ChatGPT 3, 3.5, and 4, which is the current version at the time that I'm recording this video. These numbers basically refer to the iterations of the model behind ChatGPT. Each iteration of this model, it becomes better in creating relevant answers to your question. OpenAI is also going to introduce third-party applications that ChatGPT can interact with. These are called ChatGPT plugins. If you want to know a little bit more about this, I already made a video on it and I'll link it in the description below and somewhere in this video. All right, so another AI application that is currently shaking up the internet is called Midjourney. ChatGPT gives you text after you give it a prompt. Midjourney can create images on the fly that matches the prompt that you give it. So if I want to see a cat in space, well, I get a cat in space. Important to know is that the application actually creates this image. So it's not just looking on the internet to try and find something that matches my prompt. So while it does not just look for the image online and actually creates the image, it does however base its images and its style on images that it has been trained on. These images that it has been trained on are often created by others. That means that I'm also able to ask for a painting of a cat in the style of Rembrandt. Artificial intelligence in this application will assume the style of Rembrandt 
and then just paint the cat for me. It's absolutely crazy, right? This opens a whole new world of content creation. But there are also many more benefits that the world of AI brings to us. For example, in healthcare, AI algorithms can analyze medical images like x-rays and MRIs to detect diseases like cancer or spot fractures with higher accuracy than a human. Because artificial intelligence can take in a lot of information at once and find the best possible outcome, it can, for example, go through a patient's medical history and provide a personalized treatment plan based on the patient data, genetic information, allergies and other medical information. Or, for example, in business, the eye can quickly go through complaint data as it's coming in and provide report to the managers, which in turn can take action to provide better products and services. Without AI, this process can take up to three months because data analysts and business analysts need to analyze the data first before generating a report in which the manager can take action. Imagine customer support. No need to feel stuck with a question outside of working hours, waiting patiently for the next day to come, to find out that you have to wait an hour in line to speak to an actual person, which eventually also refers you back to the website for your answer. AI trained with the proper information can provide the answers that you are looking for. And it can even do this in spoken language. These applications are really great and they open up a whole new world for us. But it also opens up a lot of discussion and many questions which are left unanswered. Like who owns the art that is generated by artificial intelligence? What do we do if someone creates an image of you using artificial intelligence? And should we always be able to recognize what has been created by an AI and what has been created by a human? Maybe more importantly, should answers given by the AI actually feel like human reactions and should they still be distinguishable from each other? In part 2 of this video, I will show you how computer scientists have been developing experiments to tell man and machine apart. We will dive into the history of AI and look at its future. And of course, I will show you a bunch of cool applications of AI. So make sure to check out part 2 of this video and I'll see you in the next one. And by the way, make sure that you give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Also, click the little notification bell in order to be updated when part 2 of this video comes out.